What's up everybody, Alex here with another video and this is the Logitech G915 wireless gaming mechanical keyboard. Now I have the 10 keyless model here and I've owned it for about a week now so this video is really just going to be about whether or not it could possibly be worth buying because it is an incredible keyboard, I absolutely love so many things about it but it is very expensive so the full size version that this keyboard also comes in costs about $250 and the 10 keyless model is a little bit cheaper at about $200 although I did manage to get it a little bit cheaper than that at about 170. Now, you might be wondering pretty reasonably, what on earth could possibly be in this keyboard to make it worth that kind of money? And I would say actually surprisingly there is a lot, but there are also some important things that I really don't like about this keyboard, which you should be aware of if you're thinking about buying one. So let's go ahead and take a closer look. So let's start off with what's included in the box. So if you just take off the front section of the box, you can see the keyboard immediately below. And then just below that, you'll see the cable, which is included for charging and also for plugging into other devices like your laptop, for example. And then you also get a little adapter which is a, a dongle that essentially plugs in via USB-C to connect the keyboard. And you get a little holder for the dongle as well, which you can also use to extend the range of the dongle with the included cable. And then below that, you've got a couple of other things. You've got a Logitech sticker, and then you've got a couple of other pieces of documentation. And that is really all you get. And to be honest, I think that's fine. I don't think there's really anything else that you need with this keyboard. One of the most characteristic things about this keyboard is the size. Now I mentioned I have the 10 keyless model. So who is this sort of size of keyboard gonna be good for? Well, I would say, if you're doing a lot of gaming, for example, at your computer, maybe you're not using so many things like spreadsheets and you just don't care about having a number pad, then this is gonna be really good. And also, if you don't want a keyboard to take up too much space on your desk, just to give you a little bit more room. I personally love the 10 keyless size. I think it's really good. I wouldn't go for the full size board. Um, also, the fact that it's a little bit cheaper makes it a, a good advantage as well. But if you're into really compact keyboards, like others, which for example, are like a 60% keyboard or something like that, which are even smaller than a 10 keyless like this, then you're probably gonna wanna look elsewhere. Now I think the basic layout of the keyboard is really simple, but I think it's actually a great strength. If you look at the top, you've got the escape key and then a dedicated row of function keys. And then just below a little bit of space below that, you've got the main section of the board with a big block of keys near the uh, bottom left hand side. And then just on the right, you've got a couple of extra blocks, one of which has the directional buttons on the bottom right hand side. And then just above that, a couple of extra blocks, one of which has the insert, home, delete keys, that kind of thing, um, and then a few more extra keys at the top. And I think that layout is just really great because you've got a little bit of space between each of the main sections, which kind of gives the board a little bit of space to breathe. For me, I think it's really easy to just see where everything is at a glance. I kind of prefer it to a more compact layout, although that is personal preference partly. And yeah, I mean, I just think it looks really good. Now, another good thing is that just even above that, right at the top of the board, you've got these extra rubber buttons which give you a little bit more functionality. So at the top left hand side, you've got buttons for toggling between the light speed connection via the dongle and Bluetooth. And then to the right of that, you've got a button for toggling something called game mode, which by default just disables the Windows key, which means that you can't accidentally press it while you're gaming. And then you've got a button for controlling brightness and to the right hand side, a bunch of different multimedia controls. And then another nice touch is that on the top right hand side, you've got a little slider for controlling the volume. If you take a look at the other sides of the keyboard, you'll see it's actually a fairly understated design. For example, if you look at the left-hand side and the right-hand side, the casing is completely solid with no openings or holes in them. And that's also true of the side which will be facing you while you're using the keyboard. If you take a look at the top of the keyboard, then it's also pretty simple. So on the right-hand side, you've got your on-off button. And then on the left-hand side, you've got your port for charging and connecting to other devices. It is a little bit of a shame that the port is micro USB-C instead of USB-C. You know, it would be so much better to just be able to use those extra USB-C cables that everybody has lying around nowadays. But you know, it does come with a micro USB cable, so it's not the end of the world. Now things are really nice actually if you take a look under the keyboard. So you can see near the top, first of all, that you've got feet on the left and right hand side which control the height at which the keyboard stands on your desk. And you've got two different height levels that you can switch between depending on what your preferences are. Or you can of course just leave it flat if you don't want to use the feet at all. I personally keep it at the highest setting available, so when those feet are maximum extended. I just kind of feel like that's the most comfortable, um, but that's kind of just personal preference. I actually almost feel like I wish that it could be propped up even further at the front, but I think the settings that it comes with are fine anyway. And another nice feature of the underside actually is that there's a little socket in the middle of the board for storing the dongle in when you're traveling around. And that is a really nice feature. It seems like such a basic one that just like every keyboard should have, um, but it's surprising how many don't have it. And it's good because it just makes it so much easier not to lose that dongle whenever, you know, whenever you're moving the keyboard around. So that's great. 
When it comes to the material that the keyboard is made of, I do love almost everything about it, but it's also not perfect. Now, something I absolutely love about it is the brushed metal finish that you can see on the main part of the board. It just looks so premium. I think it just kind of has such a nice aesthetic to it. It's not really something that I see very much on many different mechanical keyboards. It seems something that's just pretty unique to the G915, but it's just a really good look. Now, one drawback, unfortunately, is the material that the keycaps are made out of. So Logitech have gone here with double shot ABS plastic, which doesn't feel the most premium, and it is a little bit of a shame given that the keyboard is priced so expensively. One really frustrating thing about the keycaps though is that they do seem quite difficult to remove from the keyboard without breaking or damaging them somehow. So for example, I tried to remove the upper directional button on the bottom right hand side of the keyboard, and I think one of the pins below bent or kind of broke a little bit, which has now just meant that it's really difficult to put that keycap back on the keyboard and making it sit on the key switch in exactly the same way as it did before I tried to remove it. It hasn't completely changed the typing experience for me, but it does just fit a little bit loosely on the board now, so it's it's not great. And I just kind of feel like the keycaps maybe could have been made to a little bit of a higher standard to make customization a little bit easier. By the way, just a side note, if you are enjoying this video, then a sub to the channel would be massively appreciated. Let's talk about the weight of the keyboard now. This is interesting for me. So the weight is 1.8 pounds or about 810 grams. And I have to say, actually, when I first got my hands on the keyboard, it didn't feel as heavy as I was expecting it to. Um, and I was kind of concerned, you know, does that mean that maybe it's not as durable or as premium as I would have hoped? I actually do think though that after using it for about a week, it feels like Logitech have actually struck a fantastic balance between making it light enough that it feels portable so that you can put it in your bag and maybe take it to a coffee shop and use it there if you like, but then at the same time feeling heavy enough that I think it does feel premium and I think it does feel very well built. So yeah, I think the weight is actually great. Okay, so what is it actually like to type on this keyboard and to use it? Now, you might already know this, but the keyboard comes in one of three different types of key switches linear, tactile, or clicky, each of which might change your typing experience fairly considerably. Now the model I have here has the linear switches and those are the ones that I'm mostly familiar with, but if you are wondering which ones you should choose for yourself, then the best thing to do first of all would be, if you can, go to a store and just try out the different switches so that you can get a sense of which ones you actually prefer firsthand. Um, but in general though, I would say, Go for the linear switches if you want something with less physical feedback and just a lower sound profile. Go with the clicky switches if you want more of a kind of buttony feel and you don't mind the extra sound that it produces and you just want more physical feedback as well. And then go for tactile if you want something in between the two. Now, as far as the linear switches go, I do think the typing experience is absolutely great on the G915. I was a little bit surprised at first. I did feel like the switches felt a little bit mushy compared to what I was expecting from a mechanical keyboard. But now that I'm used to them, I do think that they feel good. If you want get into the weeds a little bit, then I do actually think that the smaller keys have a little bit more of a satisfying, punchier sort of sound to them. I do think some of those bigger keys like shift and enter and space, for example, they do have a bit more of a thud to them and they're not quite as satisfying to type with maybe, but it's also a fairly minor point. Now, one other small complaint that I have is that if you take a look at the buttons at the top with the rubber tips on them, although they do have a nice design to them, when you actually press them, the buttons I feel, at least for me, they feel a little bit too light and maybe a little bit flimsy. I was expecting each of them to have a little bit more of a deep kind of real buttony feel to them instead, um, but they just are a little bit lightweight for me. It's not, again, it's not a huge deal, but it's just something that I would have expected to be a bit more premium given the price point of the keyboard. And just one other thing to mention about the volume slider. So the volume slider is a completely smooth one, which means that it never clicks in anywhere at any stages as you scroll through uh, to make the volume louder or quieter. Personally, I actually don't like that so much. I prefer it when there are little notches that you can feel the slider going through as you're scrolling up and down, um, but it's certainly not a deal breaker. And I do think that it's quite nice that the slider itself is made of metal, which just makes it feel a little bit more high quality. Let's talk briefly about battery life. Now, there's not really that much to say. It is absolutely phenomenal on this keyboard. I've been using the keyboard for several hours every day and I've only had to charge very recently once in the week that I've owned it. That sounds about normal from what I've heard from other people. I think most people say that they generally only have to charge roughly once a week or so, but battery life is more than what you need. And if you ever notice that the battery is running really low, you can always just plug it in with the included cable and still use it while it's charging and then you'll be up to full charge in no time. Now, as you would expect for a keyboard of this price, there are a lot of customizable features and bells and whistles that you can get access to through the included Logitech G-Hub software. The software is really easy to use. It gives you loads of different options for customizing things like the RGB lighting effects, if that's what you're into. 
it gives you options for remapping different keys, and it lets you synchronize your settings across your different Logitech devices, which is pretty cool. So the software is great, don't think there's much to complain about it at all. Last of all, let's talk about the topic of connectivity and performance. So there are three different ways you can connect the keyboard, via a wire, via Lightspeed using the dongle, or via Bluetooth. Now with the Lightspeed connection, I have to say I have not noticed a single ounce of latency at all. I think performance has been pretty much flawless. I basically haven't noticed any difference between connecting with a wire and connecting via Lightspeed. And that's whether or not I'm gaming or you know using the keyboard for productivity or whatever it is. I have heard some people say that the light speed connection can cut out if your keyboard is not within very close range of your device that you're connecting to. In my case, that's never really an issue because I'm mostly using the keyboard with a laptop and they're very close. But that's just something to keep in mind if you do have something like a gaming PC tower which isn't gonna be immediately close to your keyboard. Bluetooth, however, is gonna give you a noticeable amount of latency. I mean, at least it does in my case. So what I would recommend doing is avoiding it and using light speed whenever you can. Bluetooth can be useful in in one situation though, which is if you want to connect to multiple devices and switch between them. So for example, maybe you want to connect via Bluetooth to an iPad and you want to connect via Lightspeed to a laptop and then you can just toggle between them using the settings on the top left hand side of the keyboard. But generally stick with Lightspeed as much as possible, it's just going to give you a way better connection. Okay, so we've come to the end of this review and you're ultimately wondering, is this keyboard worth $200 or $250 for the full size version? And I would say fundamentally, it depends. First of all, I'd be worried about recommending this keyboard to you if you are put off by some of its drawbacks. So the fact that the keycaps, at least in my view, could be made to a higher standard. There's no USB-C charging. Some of the buttons don't feel as premium as they should do, like those rubber buttons at the top, I think. And then lastly, it is expensive. However, if you are willing to spend as much as this keyboard costs and you love the design, then I'd have absolutely no reservations recommending it. I think it's one of the best wireless mechanical keyboards you can get nowadays, and it's definitely gonna remain my main one for the foreseeable future. If you like this video, then don't forget to hit the like button and I would massively appreciate it if you would also hit that subscribe button. It is completely free and it massively helps out the channel. If you wanna see my review of my favorite iPad case, click here. And if you want to see my review of the Logitech G903 wireless gaming mouse, click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.